So what exactly did Lisa Raitt say in the first place that she was bullied into deleting and then groveling about? Here, her opponents kept screenshots of the original offenses because that way they can get the best of both worlds. They can use these to mock Lisa Raitt to environmentalist voters and they can use her renunciation to mock her to conservative voters. You never win anyone over, by the way, by doing this. Do you think that any Green Party or any Liberal Party voters are suddenly going to vote conservative because Lisa Ray embarrassed herself like this? Here's what she was groveling over. This is a, this is a screenshot of what she deleted, just to be clear. She was reading a, a little tweet, uh, a note by an accomplished global warming scientist himself, Ross McKittrick, international reputation, well known for debunking Al Gore's hockey stick graph that purports to show that global warming and carbon dioxide have been steady, 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 and then suddenly shot up on a graph that's shaped like a sideways hockey stick. So McKittrick proved that was a, a laughable, unscientific fake, you know. Everything was fine, 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 then boom. So McKittrick is smart, he's well regarded, and he's a critic of the theory of man-made global warming. And as you can see in that tweet there, he says, which is very interesting, he put it back up on the screen just for a moment. He said that the government's latest statement on global warming, do you see it there? It says, it's not what you might expect from the alarmist media coverage. Instead, it's measured, rooted in data, and interesting. So you can even say that's a bit of a backhanded compliment to Trudeau and his government. And Lisa Raitt simply retweeted Ross McKittrick saying, it's not as bad as the media says. And she adds, lots to read in this thread. In some, data don't lie. Now, I'm not going to take you through all of what Ross McKittrick said, but it's moderate and thoughtful and scholarly. And just for saying, read what this guy is saying, she, she takes down her tweets and issues a self-denunciation. And by the way, says, don't argue with me, argue with other people. She basically throws anyone else who's a skeptic under the bus. There was one more tweet by her, and this was the one that surely irritated the left. She says, Bottom line is there's no solid connection between climate change and the major indicators of extreme weather, despite Trudeau's claims. To the contrary, the continual claim of such a link is misinformation employed for political and rhetorical purposes. And you can't quite see it there, but she was actually quoting from an article in the Financial Post. Oh, my God. Well, you can't, you can't do that. I mean, obviously, that quote is true. How could it not be true? Justin Trudeau and Catherine McKenna literally blame fires that were started by arson. They blame arson on global warming. By the way, you'll note that tweet by Rate doesn't even question that global warming is happening. It just says there's no proven link between weather on any given day and global warming, which is pretty obvious. I mean, we're pretending to believe in science here, right? I mean, we, we don't actually believe that if you throw a virgin into a volcano, you'll change the weather or something, right? I mean, please tell me that Catherine McCann and Justin Trudeau aren't actually saying that if you pay me a carbon tax today, I'll guarantee to change the weather tomorrow. I mean, please tell me you don't believe that. Well, actually, as you know, Catherine McKenna sort of does believe that. She calls herself the minister responsible for weather. She really, really says that. What's my point today? My point is that the conservatives have lost their nerve again. We know that people in both Canada and the United States simply don't care about global warming. Um, it's way down the list there. If you ask them unprompted what they care about, if you say, if you lead them and say, do you care about global warming? They'll all nod along so as not to seem unfashionable, but no one brings up global warming unprompted. That's not a normal thing people worry about. Even liberal MPs in Ontario say no one cares and they're begging Catherine McKenna to give it a rest. They actually say, that the economy and unlimited immigration are the two top issues. So you would think that fighting back on global warming, especially the carbon tax, would be a good issue for the conservatives. I mean, no global warming fanatic would ever consider voting Tory to begin with. So, so why not irritate them a little bit, but win over the countless Canadians who either don't care or are actually sick of these jet-setting jet hypocrites telling us how much they care about reducing your carbon footprint, but we have to pay more from their private jets. They tell us how much they care. How about speaking out with some courage about the hypocrites? It worked for Doug Ford, didn't it? It just worked in Australia, where the conservative-leaning party, ironically called the Liberals, the anti-carbon tax party came from behind and won. That's why the liberal leader in, in New Brunswick 
Kevin Vickers, is excited by Lisa Raitt's collapse here. But my point is, whenever you blink like this, whenever you score a goal in your own net, whenever you give up an unforced error, whenever you give something away to your political opponents for free and renounce yourself, denounce yourself, denounce everyone who is on your team and who hasn't yet caved in in the same humiliating way, what you do is you demoralize your base and you thrill your opponents. Read her tweet again. Look at this. Well, I've learned my lesson in tweeting anything about climate change. Huh, I'm going to be transparent and let you know I'm deleting the earlier tweets. I'm not the one to fight with on this. As in fight with my colleagues or any losers out there still, still holding the line. I'm not the one to fight with on this. Because like most, I believe the emissions cause climate change and we should reduce emissions. Oh, okay. So anyone who hasn't caved in is now the enemy. That's an excerpt from the Ezra Levant Show. Every day, I do a video monologue, and then I interview an interesting guest, and then I end by reading my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at therebel.media slash shows.